today we're talking aerodynamics and specifically the concept of the adverse pressure gradient. Now this is something that I bring up in a few of my aerodynamic videos and it's the mechanism that's responsible for flow separation and stalls and things like wings, diffusers, that sort of stuff. Now I first brought this up in my how do vortex generators work video so I suggest you check that one out but I'm going to just explain what the adverse pressure gradient is here, where we see it, what causes it and what happens from it. Now there's a bit of confusion amongst people as to whether it's a positive or a negative gradient. It's technically speaking a positive gradient so I'm going to refer to it as that but just call it adverse and we'll be sweet. If you can imagine that we have a flow coming along and we place an obstruction in its path, there's going to be pressure on here. So let's, let's see our flow is coming this way along here. Because we've got this step here, we can see that the flow will be slowing down here as a result of this obstruction. So we'll be ending up with a high pressure region being built up the front here. So this high pressure region is clearly higher pressure than this incoming flow. So as we come along here, the flow is going to increase in pressure. Now if we have a look at what that means in a pressure plot, P, we can see that the flow is going to come along at a roughly constant pressure and then it's going to increase here. Now the gradient of this line here is your pressure gradient. Now we can see here it's a positive gradient which is the adverse pressure gradient. The pressure is increasing as we go along. Now what this means is we get a flow structure that involves a flow separation and recirculation region, technically speaking going that way in front of our step, and then our flow comes up along and around here. So if we look at our wing here, we can see that its pressure distribution if we look on this surface looks something like spike down like that. This is the common representation that's shown in most sort of papers and all that sort of thing. The problem is that what no one seems to notice is that when pressure is shown on a wing, typically our graph indicates the top as negative. So this graph is actually inverted. So what we're seeing here on the trailing edge here is a positive pressure gradient. It's kind of a weird concept. This is the adverse pressure gradient. And to show you why this happens, if you imagine your flow coming in here and it gets deflected on the wing and then heads up, we all know that as flow goes faster, it reduces in pressure, generally speaking. When we hit this point, our flow accelerates and hits our maximum speed. So we're going very fast here. So we go along, flow accelerates around the tip, speeds up to top, and then it slows back through to the remainder of the section because at the trailing edge of the wing, it's again meeting up with free stream flow, right? They're both going about the same speed in that trailing edge section. So basically, flow is fast here, slow here, slow here. So we can see here that the pressure has got to be low here, high here, high here. Now this is the fundamentals of how a wing works and is what gives us our downforce on our cars. So we can see that our pressure starts, let's say zero is our free stream reference pressure, starts at zero, increases to a negative peak or decreases to a negative peak, and then goes back to zero at the end of the domain. So let me redraw this in the same notation as this side. So we can see we hit a pressure peak here, then this is our positive pressure gradient along here. Now the positive pressure along here will be trying to slow the flow down again, which is exactly what we're seeing. The problem is, is that if the, the reverse pressure gradient is too high, it will slow the boundary layer too much. Now the boundary layer is the thin surface along the wing that's traveling very stationary, because when you're on the surface of an object, flow is in fact still. It then continues to have a growth out from there. So if you imagine our flow profiles along here are like that and we come along here it's slightly thicker. So this is our, if you can imagine this is the flow speed of the free stream then as we get close to the surface it gets to zero and then here our flow speed is faster there and then gets slower over a bigger distance. If our reverse pressure gradient is sufficient enough this will actually have enough force forcing it back that way that the boundary layer will try to return that way. This causes our velocity distribution to instead look like that. Which is essentially a recirculation region on the wing which is stall. And this is caused by the adverse pressure gradient pushing the boundary layer flow backwards. And this is generally undesirable as a phenomenon. So to sum up, adverse pressure gradient is created by an obstacle in the flow 
or a flow structure which causes you to have a very low pressure peak at one point that then has to return to ambient pressure. And if it's too high on something like a wing, you'll end up with flow separation and stall. I think it's a pretty simple concept. I might have explained it a bit complicated, but that's because I tried to get into the depths of it. Hopefully that clears up a few questions for people who are asking this on my Vortex Generator video. And if this doesn't answer your question, feel free to ask some questions in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, it would be great if you could leave a like. If you have a video that you'd like me to do, feel free to leave a comment on it. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.